Hey, this is Eric again with Olympic Health Physics, and today we're going to be talking through the FDA's uh, burn prevention poster for MRI and tips for keeping your patients safe. Welcome back. Today we're going to be going through the FDA's MRI burn prevention poster. Hopefully, uh, most of you have seen this poster or maybe even have it posted in your departments. If you don't have the FDA's MRI burn prevention poster posted in your department, I'd recommend that you do post it. You can uh, check out the link below for a link over to the FDA's website. You can also find uh, those links on our website as well. The poster goes through eight different ways that you can create a safer imaging environment for your patient and keep from potentially burning your patients within MRI. So we're gonna go through all eight of those. The first one is to make sure that you're screening your patients. Make sure that you're screening them for anything that they're bringing in, any kind of implants they have, any kind of medical devices that they have before they go into zone four. The second thing that you wanna do is make sure you're screening any objects that are going into the room and making sure that they're safe to go into zone four. So anything that is obviously metallic, we don't want going into zone four, anything ferrous, not want, uh, don't want that to go into zone four. Number three, you wanna make sure that your patients are changing out of their street clothes and into hospital gowns or uh, medical gowns, if that is possible for you to do that before they go into zone four. There can be metallic uh, fabrics, there can be metal in people's clothing, um, in their pockets, and it's best and easiest if you can get them to change out of their street clothes before they go into zone four. Number four, you wanna make sure that your patients aren't creating any conductive loops themselves. So for example, arms over the head, you don't want the hands clasped or them grabbing on, uh, you know, one hand grabbing onto the other wrist or their feet uh, crossed, uh, creating um, loops. So we wanna to try to avoid that. Number five, you wanna use the manufacturer provided padding uh, to pad the sides of the bore or perhaps in between the patient to insulate the patient. You can use uh, sheets and other things like that, but those are not going to be the same as the manufacturer padding. So you wanna make sure that you're using the manufacturer padding. You only use sheets and pillows uh, for patient comfort. Number six, you wanna make sure that any um, cables that are running from the coil uh, into the magnet, that the cables are in a straight line, that they're not forming loops. Uh, that's also going to be another way that you can help prevent burning your patient. Number seven, you wanna use the lowest SAR as possible. So operate in normal mode and try to keep that SAR down. And if you have a SAR monitor, keep your eye on the SAR to make sure that you're uh, within limits. And the last one, number eight, you wanna stay in communication with your patient at all times. So you have the, uh, the intercom that you can talk with the patient, make sure the patient has the squeeze ball as well, and make sure that you give them directions on how to use the squeeze ball and when it's appropriate to use the squeeze ball before you start the scan. Um, some MRI suites don't allow you to keep eyes on the patient the entire time based on the orientation of the control uh, room and the scanner. So if that's the case, you wanna have some sort of uh, way that you can monitor the patient either with mirrors or with uh, CCTV with, with video cameras so that you can keep eyes on the patient the whole time. Obviously, if you, if you do have a uh, suite that's been designed where you can keep your eyes on the patient, you wanna do that. If the patient does communicate with you and tell you that uh, there's something, if they feel burning or feel something heating up, you want to stop the scan and investigate the cause of that to make sure that um, you're not going to cause any further harm or burns to the patient. And that's it. That wraps up the eight different ways that we can try to uh, prevent MRI burns in our MRI departments. Again, you can find the FDA's MRI burn prevention uh, poster on their website. It's also on the SMRT's website, and it's a really great tool, something that I would recommend that if you don't already have it posted in your, in your department, that you do post it in your department so that everyone can be aware of the ways that we can keep from burning patients in MRI. If you have questions about MRI or MRI safety, feel free to drop us a note and we'll be happy to take a look at your situation and see if there's something that we can do to help you.